All right, so we're going to work through T2, Tutorial 2, Case Problem 1, Phillips Henslow Classic Theater. This is in MindTap, so let's get going. And I'll tell you right now, while this is prepping, I am going to be looking some things up. Um, because, as I've said before, we don't memorize everything. We understand conceptually how to do things and know how to look things up. So, all right, this is our assignment. Um, basically, we need to build the page so it looks like this. And if you recall, if you jump back to Blackboard, um, we can see a preview here of what the assignment will look like when we are all done. So the content and layout of the page has been created for you. Your job will create a style sheet for the topography of the page. All right. Um, Build things when you're done. Click the corresponding button. All right, let's get started. Open phplays.html. So remember, we open it here. And then I'm going to open this in a new tab. I like to have more room to work with than this little thing on the side. I'm actually going to take this and make it disappear. Um, and open PH styles. So we got both of those open here. And enter your name and date. So. And this is February 12th, 2022 is when I'm recording this. So comments are different, right? In CSS, it's uh, slash star and then all your comments and then star slash. In HTML, less than bang dash dash and then dash dash greater than. But anyway, we put those in there and go to pH styles. Oh, and you know, they said study the content and structure. So this is the HTML page. We start with doc type HTML telling us this is HTML5. We have our HTML tag, and then therefore we have our closing HTML tag at the very bottom. Um, we have our head to, for the document to tell the browser all about the page, and then our body, which is the page. Within a header, we have a navigation with a list of all these different uh, links, and then we have a logo, and then that ends the he the header, we have a paragraph of text, and then we have sections for each play. I'm not going to go over every single one of them, but we have a section, and then within the play, we have another navigation, okay? We have the title of the play. There's an aside that tells us who the play was written by and who it was directed by, and this is in a... Um, a definition list. So we have our term and our description. And then we have another P, another paragraph of a summary of the play. And we repeat that a few times. That's why it looks like there's a lot here. And then after the last section, we have a footer with the address or the contact information and then close footer. All right. So we studied that. Um, pH styles is what we're going to be building. So we're going to be this is underneath. This is where we're going to put our structural styles, navigation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now we're going to go back to P, <coughs> excuse me, PH place. And within the head, we need to create links to PH layout and PH styles.css. And I always forget if it's, yeah, it's link href equals. All right, PH layout.css and this rel is equal to style sheet. The link tag does not get closed. I'm just going to copy paste and ph styles.css and ph styles.css is actually um, what we're going to be working on here. And in ph styles at the top before the comment section, we need to specify the char set, so at char set as UTF-8, and then put a semicolon in there. So let's make sure that we've done these things. Let's try this. Great, everything has been completed. Moving along. So that was just setup work. All right, so we need to define some fonts here. And we are going to put these, we're defining these web fonts before the comment section. That's, I think, a weird place to put them, but okay. So I'm going to create a font base and we are going to 
defined this font family as champagne. And then the source for this font, when we say, when we go to use champagne, we're going to try to pull from the URL, um, and we can use double or single quotes here, um, CAC underscore champagne dot WOFF as the first one. And if our browser doesn't support, um, sorry, I got to put the format in there. Format is WOFF. And then if our browser does not support the WFF format or what format as I like to call it, then we're actually going to fall back on the TTF version, which is the true type version. And then make sure, you know, I copied this line, which ends in a comma. So when I pasted it below, I didn't make sure that I changed that comma to a semicolon right below it. Below it. So at font face, and then we have curly brackets. So this is defining this font face. We're calling it champagne. And if you have problems with spelling of champagne, copy paste. And then where, you know, when we say use the champagne font, what does that mean? Well, what you're looking for is CAC champagne.ttf or CAC champagne.woof are the two files right here. Okay. Can we do anything with this? I guess if anything, if we wanted to, we could rename it. So copy, paste, and then paste again there. So just make sure we got the spelling right. Okay, those are the files that are sitting in that same directory as our phstyles.css. All right, I wonder if I can test. I would like to like, yeah, can we? Hang on, I just want to see this. I'm going to pretend I did this because I really didn't, but I want to make sure I got this one right here at least. So it should give me a little bit of, yeah. So it, it's, you can see here that's been added, right? That's been added, right? This has been done, right? Um, but we got to get the other ones in there. So the other ones, if I scroll back up over here and because that's right, I'm going to copy paste. And then we're going to have the grunge font, which is going to use 1942.woof or 1944.truetype. And the Dopkin font, which uses Dopkin plain, woof, and truetype. Um, all right, I think we're done with that section. So I should be able to click on this one more time, make sure this section's done. Great, that all passed. If I come back here and refresh, um, it didn't really do much. So the layout did change because if you recall, we did load phlayout.css, all right? That was given to us. We're gonna be working with layout um, in a few weeks, but styles.css, that's what we're working on, fonts and colors and everything. If we look at our page, um, we're not using those fonts yet because we never said, go use that font, right? All we did was define the font. So next, maybe not next, but soon we're gonna be using those fonts. Okay, so that bit's done. And then set a background color, go to the structural styles and create a rule that sets the background color of the HTML element. So we need to select the HTML element, which is just simply HTML, and then I'm going to set the background and I just type back and it says, hey, do you want to do background color? I hit tab. Yes, I do. And the color that we want is this HSL value. I'm just going to copy paste to get it right, but I am going to explain it. HSL is hue, saturation, uh, lightness, I believe. And our editor actually shows us what the color is there. So again, if I go back, you don't see anything until I refresh and it set the background color of the entire HTML page to that color. And now I need to do the background color of the body. So if we look at this and inspect it, we see that the HTML and you know, it's, it's highlighted up here in my browser. So the HTML goes all the way from the left-hand side, all the way to the right-hand side. That's the HTML. 
but the body actually has a maximum width of 1,020 pixels. Okay, again, we're going to worry about layout uh, in the future, but just understand that right now the body is not the entire width of the page. It is just this bit right here that you see highlighted. So when I come back, um, I need to set the background of the body. So I'm just going to copy paste again, change this to body. And then we're using this HSL value. Um, you know, I normally work with RGB values, not HSL, but there we go. This is what our page looks like at this point. All right, and then create a style rule for the header that sets its background color to black. Oh, this is an even easier one. On header, we're going to set the background color to black. And we can actually just say black, all right? That's one of the predefined colors. And if we look at that, so our page should look like this right now. I think that's done. All right, great work. Let's move on. Set the margin and font size. Let's create a style rule for every paragraph. Well, it didn't say move to navigation, so I'm going to keep going in the structural side here. Every paragraph that sets the margin space to zero pixels. So I can just say zero. Uh, zero is the only measurement that I don't need to specify pixels or inches or whatever, because zero is zero no matter how you measure it. All right. And the padding is going to be five pixels on the top. So I'm going to do padding top five pixels and then 25 pixels on the right bottom and left. So I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you one way to do this. Right bottom, oops, bottom and left. So this would work. Okay. Um, but it is like a lot of code here. So if I wanted to put a shortcut in for this, I could do padding and just specify these all at the same time. Remember padding, if it, it works like a clock starting at the 12 o'clock position, which is at the top. So we want the top to be zero. We want the right to be 25 pixels, the bottom 25 pixels, and the left 25 pixels. All right, so these four, sorry, five pixels on the top. So these four lines or this one line is the same thing. All right, I'm gonna comment this out just leave it in there. But just to show you, there's a couple of different ways to do that. There's actually a, another way I, I'm thinking of right now, but I think that's a little confusing. So we're not going to get into that. Um, all right. For, for paragraphs that are direct children of the body element. So body, direct children, the paragraphs that are children of the body. Create a style rule that sets the font size. 1.1 m and horizontally horizontally centers the text text line center all right i've done enough let's come back and refresh to make sure things are happening so this is the paragraph that is a direct child of the body if we look back here here's the paragraph that's a direct child of the body there's other paragraphs right like this paragraph but this paragraph is within a section which is in the body. So it's a descendant, but not a child. So these paragraphs are not centered, only this one is. And then some spacing was done, which is a little bit harder to see, um, but it's there, okay. And then we're gonna do for the address, which is at the bottom of our page down here. Set the font style to normal. So the browser makes addresses italicized. We don't want that. So we're going to reset it to normal. And then I want the size a little bit smaller. So I'm going to get 90% of the original size. Horizontally centered. Set the top and bottom padding to 10 pixels. Padding top, 10 pixels. Padding bottom 10 pixels. All right, so that should be the entire 
margin and font size section, I'm going to validate this. While that's working, I'm going to refresh this. And you can see down here, this is a little bit smaller text now, centered, normal, it's not italicized. Okay, great, that section's done. Now navigation list, I'm going to go to the navigation list section. Um, create a style rule for the nav A. Nav A. So these are anchors within the navigation. Um, nav A selector that displays the text using the font stack. Trebuchet, blah, blah, blah. Copy that. Okay. Oh, I want to use this font stack when working with the anchors within the navigation section. And the top and bottom padding should be 10 pixels. Uh, hey, that is, get rid of that. That's just like this. Copy, paste. I'm back here. Um, it's going to be hard to see these because it's this blue on black. Um, so I'm not really going to look at that right now because what I need to do right here, for every unvisited and previously visited hyperlink within a nav element. All right. So you kind of have to write this backward. So nav A, and then the unvisited is just link. All right. And then that's for unvisited and previously visited. So nav A colon visited. So if you haven't been to that link yet, or you have previously been to that link, um, set the color to white. Removing the underline from the link text, that is text decoration none. Set the background color to the semi transparent value, this. Right. And then for every active or hovered nav link, I'm just going to take this and copy it because I imagine they're going to do something pretty similar. Um, but this is for active links, meaning you have the your finger holding down on it on a mobile device or your cursor is on it and you're holding down the mouse button. That's what active means. And then um, hover would mean your mouse is over that element, but your mouse button is not down yet. Set the font color to this color here. So instead of white, I'm going to use this color. Set the background color to this. And it didn't say anything about underline or not, so I'm going to get rid of that. All right, now let's take a look at this. So the font has changed to this um, trebuchet. And when we mouse over it, um, I wonder if, let me see here, are we, what's the link? I'm kind of interested in what the link is to see. Yeah, the link is like the whole thing. So when we mouse over it, we're changing the background color and the font color as well. All right, so this is what you should be look, look, looking like right now. So let's test that. I probably should have clicked that button before going to look at it. Uh-oh, I missed something. Let's see what I missed. All right, so I just um, looked at what the code pattern was that this was looking for. I disagree with this, um, but this is how we fix for the navigation list. So it's asking for every link within a nav element, which is what I previously had, right? I had nav A, that's a link within a nav element. What MindTap is looking for is nav U L L I A. Much more specific. Nav U L L I A. That's not what the text asked for, but that's what you have to do to get the code to pass. So well, all of these are nav U L L I A, nav U L L I A. This is a link, a visited, a active, a hover. Just make sure that nav arrow or nav greater than uh, UL, greater than LI. I'm kind of, kind of surprised they don't want to an arrow there as well, but whatever. This is what the what got the check to pass. So 
we're good to move on. All right, the playbills. So every one of these things is the playbill. We have one, well, technically the playbill starts way up here because this is the navigation for the playbill. This is the navigation for this playbill. All right, and when you look at these, we have every playbill is in a section and they have this playbill class and each has its own ID, play one, two, three, four. All right, so create a style rule for this selector. Well, when they give you the selector, we're just gonna use it. It sets the font size to 3M and the font weight to normal. Set the margin space around the H1 headings to zero pixels. Set the padding to 20 on the top, zero on the right. And I'm going to do this all in one because they're giving it to us in the right order. 20 pixels on the top, zero on the right, 10 pixels on the bottom, 20 pixels on the left. So that's playbill appearance. Can I go validate this right now? I can, let's go look at it first. So now it looks like this. Let's validate that bit. The next section is a lot of copy paste. So we're gonna make sure we get one right. Okay, great, we did that. And now for the background, every playbill is section is identified by a different ID. I told you that, right? Um, and remember this, what the dot operator sex selects any of the sections with a class of playbill. But when we're working with IDs, we need to use the pound sign. So I need to take, I need to find play one. Right. Um, create rules that's a different background color for each playbill. So for play one, the background color is this. And each one will have a different font. So play one is going to use font family. Pull that up for me, thank you. And it's going to be champagne. And if you can't follow the champagne rules, use cursive. And remember the champagne rules is what I set up here. All right, so that looks fine. If I come back here, refresh, only the first one is this purple color. And I don't think that font looks right. So I'm going to do a little debugging here because that, I don't know, like if you remember, let's come back here, look at the preview. Well, the only thing different is, oh no, because like all this is plain text, this is plain, it should only be this first bit here. Maybe I did something wrong. Let me read this again. Oh yeah, o only H1 headings. So in How would we do this? Let's see. Let's just do play one, H1. That's gonna have this font family. There we go. Now, is that looking like this? Yep. Okay, it is. I mean, obviously we still have some work to do over here, but um, this bit's working right. Okay, now that I corrected myself there, I'm going to take this, copy it, paste, and this is going to be for play two. And then I have paste, and I put it in the wrong spot. Move a little bit faster than mind tap moves here. Play three. And play four. Okay. And two is this color. So really just make sure you have the colors in the right places. This is three, four, and now we're changing our fonts. Two, three, four, come back, refresh. And it looks like this now. And again, if we come back here, they look pretty similar. Okay, great. So I think that's done. Oh, I forgot to hit the button.
Great work. Let's move on. Definition lists. So we have definition list definition list styles down here. Give me some room here. I'll do blank spaces. Okay. So if we look at the HTML, we talked about this. The definition list, the term is written by, the description is the person's name. So we're going to put some styles on this. Um, create a style rule for the DT element. So all DTs are going to have the font size 1.3M and font weight is bold and font color. Oops, I see they tricky you on that. They call it font color, but the um, attribute is only color. And here's the value that we're using, semicolon. And then for every DD, what we want to do is set the font size to 1.3. I lost my closing bracket there. The left margin space, so margin left is zero pixels. And the bottom margin, margin bottom, is 10 pixels. And we just fix that. So now I'm going to remember, click that. Now I'll go back and refresh. Now it looks like this. If I come back, that looks just like this. I think we're good. That said, we're good. Let's move on to step seven, review the page. Again, we did that, right? Our page is right here. They want to make sure that the page looks like this. I think it does. Let's test everything. And we're good. So that's it. That's your final project for your assignment for T2 case problem one, Philip Henslow Classic Theater.